Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to my newest patrons. We're about halfway through the month of July, so Ben, Serial Spiller, Benjamin, Oscar, Crunch, Larry, Mark, John, Norm, and Roy. Thank you guys very much, I appreciate the support. And yes, I finally have a video that I will be uploading specifically to Patreon. So for all of you guys over there, thank you and be on the lookout for that. I will talk to you guys over there. And I wanna use this Elon tweet to pose a question to you guys. He said, those who attack space maybe don't realize that space represents hope for so many people. So for you, does space exploration and travel represent hope? Or are you somebody that's not really interested in space and your answer would be nope? So let me know, hope or nope below. Personally, for me, I think space exploration is awesome. I think it's incredible what they are doing. The engineering is truly out of this world, but I don't ever see myself wanting to go to the moon or Mars if that were even a possibility, even if it was financially affordable. I'm just not personally that interested in it, but I would of course not take anything away from what they're doing. So here we have the Econo Day economic calendar, which gives the timing of different data releases. As you can see today, July 13th, we had the CPI report come out at 8.30 this morning, which definitely started to move the market a little bit pre-market. And it's a nice tool because you can click and see the actual report right when it comes out. So you can see the actual was 0.9% for month over month data. This would be May to June, and the consensus range was 0.4 to 0.6. So we're about 30 basis points over consensus, meaning that inflation is running a little bit hotter than the consensus estimate. And of course, if the price of goods is going up, that means consumers have a less money to invest and spend on the economy, which would overall be a negative thing. But really, I just wanted to bring your attention to this Econo Day calendar. So here we get some new data about EV registrations for the first quarter of this year in the United States. And I personally really like tracking these numbers because we need to see the overall market share of EVs penetrate more and go from you know that previous one to 2% market share up to five and up to 10. And as we hit each milestone, each time it will be a big deal. So as you can see through the first four months of 2021, January, February, March, and April, EV registrations were 95% higher compared to the same period in 2020. Now, yes, the pandemic started to get serious in March. So that was maybe March and April that would skew the data slightly, but just stick with me. So far in 2021, EVs still only make up 2.3% of the US market in the first quarter of 2021. So as you can see, the room for growth here in this potential market that Tesla is looking to capture is just insane. We're only at 2.3%. And listen to this. So Tesla remains the dominant player in this category with 71% of new electric vehicles registered in the United States. So Tesla has a 71% market share in Q1 of this year in the United States. That is a huge figure. And to put some context on it, the Model Y saw 53,000 registrations, the Model 3 35,000, now, Tesla was followed by the Chevy Bolt with 13,000, the Ford Mustang Mach-E with 6,000, and the Nissan Leaf with 5,000. So as you can see, the Model 3 has almost three times as many registrations as the next closest non-Tesla competitor, the Chevy Bolt. And you have to remember the Model S and X were basically zeros during quarter one of this year as production was really shut down to get ready for the Plaid model. So you have to keep that in mind too. And I thought this data was helpful too. So California actually makes up 38% of those new EV registrations in Q1. Florida makes up about 7.2%. And then Texas, where by the way, Tesla cannot actually sell directly to the consumer yet because of some stupid and outdated laws makes up 5.9% of EV registration. So you would obviously expect that number to go way up when one, Giga Austin is online, and when two, hopefully that law that bans Tesla from selling directly to consumer is eventually removed. But clearly California is still the main state when it comes to EV adoption. And there's a lot of talk out there about Elon not enjoying being the CEO of Tesla. Well, I think some of us already knew that, but what I want you guys to know is that eventually Elon is no longer going to be the CEO. It could actually actually be this decade, maybe five years, maybe eight years, 
but at some time, I think Elon definitely wants to transition to just being an engineer. He doesn't wanna be dealing with the politics and everything that comes with that role. So I think the media is gonna make a huge deal of this whenever Elon decides to step down or change roles. But just to prepare you guys for when that time comes, I personally think it will be a net positive thing, letting Elon settle into a role that he is best at and that he loves, and maybe having someone new step into that role that is honestly better suited to be an actual CEO of one of the biggest and perhaps the biggest company on the planet when that time comes. And here I have some humor for you on this fine Tuesday. City reiterates a sell rating on Tesla and they have two main takeaways. So the city analyst Ite McKaylee, remember the name, has a $175 price target on Tesla, which is just insane. But let's find out why. The videos from the new FSD V9 posted by testers show improvements in certain things, but the rate of disengagements and interventions doesn't appear any different than before. And then he said, though it's early, the rollout V9 doesn't appear to support the bull case around Tesla imminently reaching L4 Robo Taxi at superhuman safety performance. This could be taken as a positive for LiDAR stocks and competing EV platforms. So basically he's saying that Tesla's FSD is not scaling as fast as they had hoped, but now we're going to support other options that aren't scalable at all, namely LiDAR. But honestly, for me, a $175 price target when Tesla is trading around $680 is just completely absurd in my opinion. And this guy should be laughed out of the room. And if you go to his tip ranks, well, what do you know, here he is, ranked 7492 out of 7592. So no offense, Tay, but I think you should consider a new profession. So a quick anecdote here, remember, don't take this as gospel, but Tesla Beijing sales consultant, the Made in China Model Y standard range orders on the market entry day were over 10,000 on the first day, over 5,000 on the second day, and the third day orders are not out yet, but there should be a lot. So just one more data point that this new Model Y in Shanghai could be a really big deal. And I wanna share a quick clip from this video with you. There was a recent hailstorm in Texas, and this is showing, documenting, how the Tesla solar glass roof actually held up. Your roof is unique, and y'all went through the snowpocalypse. Yep. And then a few months later, just yeah. recently, y'all got a major hailstorm. Pretty significant, uh, consistent ping pong to large golf ball size, and then some of the larger stones that were coming down were almost baseball size. Yeah, just uh, for a good 20 to 30 minutes straight, uh, just battering the uh, the roof and the gutters. And uh, so I was certain that we were going to come out here and just see busted glass, you know, shingles. Oh, and uh, so, but we got up, you know, the next uh, the next morning and. Uh, checked the app and it was still producing solar and it looked like a pretty because it was a it was a sunny day so it looked like a nice smooth production curve and we uh, we looked around and I'm like I don't see anything of significance in terms of damage you know to the roof but you know let's have the guys out and uh, and just do a really good inspection just to make sure there's no hairline cracks there's no functional degradation you know performance degradation um, and so that's you know over the last I guess it's been about two and a half, three weeks. Um, I've been producing the most amount of solar that I've produced all year, uh, even after that, uh, that significant event. So it seemingly passed the test with flying colors and obviously I think it looks awesome. And really the only other roof that could sustain something like that would be a metal type roof. Maybe there are some others, let me know if there are below. But the point being, as long as Tesla can keep driving down these costs, man, this is going to be such an awesome option. I definitely hope to have one one day. It looks great, it's durable, it provides energy and supports Tesla. Sign me up for that 10 times out of 10. Kim Paquette tweeted, our cars can hear, but Elon replied, not yet, but they will. It's actually needed for full self-driving, so that's interesting. And then someone said, transparency mode through speaker system at low speeds, like driving with the top down, hearing all of your surroundings. And Elon replied, interesting idea. So that definitely doesn't confirm that this feature is coming, but something to watch for at the very least. And in case you didn't see this Mach-E and Model Y comparison video when they talk about the suspensions and the wiring, basically they are still really impressed with the Model Y. And yes, the Mach-E is doing some things well, but they are definitely not on the level of Tesla. And the big takeaway is that 
they seem to think that Tesla engineers really talk to themselves and they're kind of coordinating and collaborating where the Mach-E and some of these other like the ID4s, they really still have independent engineer teams where it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of collaboration, which of course means that Tesla will have the most efficient and the most streamlined parts. And that of course helps to drive down costs and should help with the longevity of the vehicles as well. But the video is linked below if you wanna go check out the whole thing. It's about 18 minutes long. And a quick note for you gamers out there. So some Tesla things were added to the game PUBG, which used to be a super popular game, not so much anymore, but the Gigafactory, Model Y, Semi, and Roadster are now in the game and specifically added to PUBG Mobile. But as you can see, as of May, 2021, there are only about 419,000 active players on the game when at one point back in 2018, there were over 3 million. So the game has definitely decreased in popularity, mainly due to the emergence of Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone. But even with, you know, almost half a million people still playing, I thought it was a cool note. Here we have pictures of a Tesla being test driven in India, but the concern is with the ground clearance. To which someone replied, come to Karnataka, the only state to have a separate department of speed breakers like speed bumps. Some of the speed breakers stand out like actual hills. They will either get stranded on top or never make it up to the top of the slope. Any of you out there that are watching from India, please let me know your thoughts below as to how a Tesla like this would fare in India. I'd be happy to hear your opinion. And to send you guys off today, once again, I will leave you with two quick clips of the new FSD beta v9 things that i deem to be highlights and interesting clips or edge cases if you will so enjoy these once again please take a moment to like the video if you did i hope you guys have an awesome day and a big thank you to everybody at the end of the video There's a pedestrian in the in the white shirt and pants, and then there's a white BMW in front of me trying to go in. So okay, that's good. The car let the white BMW go in because it was first. Now there's a black car, so we need to squeeze in. We'll see how it works. That's good. The black car's going. We are entering into Whole Foods shopping center parking lot. This was overall a fantastic drive, great test. 